It's been a good lure for you today. So I don't yep. think it's as big as this one. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Beautiful fish, man. <laughs> good job. Well, I told you. Hi, we have a special guest today, Doug Stangy, uh, editor in chief of In Fisherman Magazine, and um, longtime uh, friend of ours at uh, Manatee's Get Fishing. Um, and we're out here ice fishing today. And Doug, uh, and yesterday, and yesterday, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, and Fisherman's been covering ice fishing. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, in a lot of places, uh, you're known as the father of modern ice fishing in North America. And so, I guess I have a question for you: Why ice fishing? Ah, uh, well, I've always been interested in just about everything that has to do with fishing. So, 365 days a year, obviously. So, it was a natural. And yeah, you know, um, some of the first really serious fishing that I did was probably either catfishing, uh, fishing for panfish in the Iowa Great Lakes, and then when winter came, of course, ice fishing too. So it was a natural. Yeah. So this, I mean, start, you know, you go back into the 1970s, and that was when some of the first really high test uh, fiberglass rods were being made in the Iowa Great Lakes area. And back in those days, we were already fishing with rods and reels, and so it was just the same thing that we're doing today. The rods were a little bit more primitive, but they certainly had nice actions. Uh, Gilmore was making, it was a Gilmore company was making these rods. And then when I moved to In Fisherman in early 1980, um, none of the guys, I mean, they had ice fish, but most of them didn't ice fish, and so that's what, that's how we got ice fishing, that's how we got science, you know, that was, these were, because I was interested in them. That's how we started catfishing and that, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, a little history there. Yeah, it was about uh, the early 80s when you had your first major uh, feature articles on ice fishing and yep. fishermen. Yep. And uh, since then, we've gone on to uh, books specifically on ice fishing, gone on to videos on ice fishing, and um, really, uh, I think, um, in, in my mind, uh, nobody at the time had gone into full seasons of just ice fishing like in Fisherman had a few years ago. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that uh, what we did with those articles in those early days is what really started the ball rolling. Certainly Dave Gens uh, deserves great credit for the mobility aspect and the combination of, uh, you know, the sonar and that kind of thing. But uh, this was all coming together at that time. And H HT Enterprises, Paul Grawl with the tip-ups back in, the, in that day. So to me, that it was always kind of a combination of three entities. It was sort of Paul on the tackle front, uh, and then Dave on the shacks and the mobility aspect. And then we just brought everything together with the magazine by writing about it in the magazines and having an active and curious interest in, in ice fishing. So, yeah, that's where it all started. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the central hub of all that activity. Yep. That was nice. And when I, I read often um, Ice Fishing Secrets, the book, yep. um, that, that whole chapter about you and uh, Dave and Ellen or, and Paul Grohl and mm -hmm. all those guys getting together was pretty pretty exciting. Yes, it was. And you know what, though? Even today, there are a lot of n new, interesting things happening that are exciting. Okay. Um, we're uh, actually, today, we are, we are fishing with, uh, we are fishing baitless for walleyes um, with some, uh, some special, we call them high, kind of hybrid type spoons. Um, yep. And... Um, I was I was going to ask you. Uh, it was interesting because uh, we caught a lot of fish yesterday using bait and some big ones. Yep. Um, but today we caught, I would have to say, above average size fish on artificials, either uh, you know just completely uh, action type lures. And uh, where do you see that going? Is that something that you noticed as well? Well, it's an uh, old thing with me because. My all-time favorite lure, probably, for ice fishing has always been the jigging Arapala. And from the earliest days in the Iowa Great Lakes region, this goes back to the, those days, uh, and I didn't start fishing with, you know, I mean, I, there was other great fishermen back in those days fishing the jigging Arapala, and they didn't fish with bait. And so I had no tradition of fishing with bait ever uh, when it came to jigging Rapalas. It was just you dart it, you make it, you make it come to life, and it has nothing to do with bait. So I just never did fish it. And if you tip that treble hook on the uh, jigging Rapala with bait, you will still catch, you know, um, 
those surly catch a lot more small fish, and they 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 just get focused on that um, eyeball hanging there or the uh, the um, minnow head, right, and yeah. they'll you know so you'd be catching a ton more fish, uh, certainly, but smaller, and fish that uh, think that if you fool them they're going to eat this whole thing, and typically. I would say 60% eat it from the head on, and another 40% maybe eat it from the back. So that those two hooks uh, are key. So now that we're fishing the Seville by vibrato today, mm -hmm. which nice. we've called a hybrid, um, and if you've never seen it, it's a very flashy. It's got a beautiful finish on it, and it has two treble hooks. At, it has a treble hook at each end, and it's flat. So it fishes like, as you said, it fishes like a blade bait on one hand. It fishes like a spoon, but it's a spoon that lays flat. It fishes like a lipless crankbait, which has come on for walleyes big time in the last little bit. And then um, it, it also is, uh, has the profile of the jigging rapala. It's sitting there, you know, horizontal. So it's got, you take four major categories of lures that work dynamite for walleyes, and you kind of have little aspects of it all in this Sibyl vibrato. So it's just a natural for walleyes, and but it's not one of those things that's caught on. So when you're talking about something new, here's something that's uh, not totally new, but it's not many people using it. Yeah, uh, even though we were fishing bait with it, another kind of like a hybrid uh, that we did well with yesterday was you the did. real bait flasher jig. Yeah, I was impressed and, um, how that worked. Uh, we, we usually fish it with, you know, some cut bait yep. or a uh, minnow head or an eyeball on it. Um, but I know you've had a lot of success with artificials on on it in current and yeah in and open in water yeah you just kind of pull it forward and that you know the little blade on there turns and I usually use uh, in cold water a two and a half inch gulp minnow uh, or a three incher and uh, then in open water uh, when it warms up a little bit I'll go to a four inch minnow mm -hmm. on that that and it's beautiful bait it's kind of like a hybrid between a jig and a uh, blade bait right um, because you can fish it aggressively but you can also slow it down and fish it subtly and i think that's where those crossovers the successful ones like the flasher jig and the sabelle yep um shine because they have that ability to fish them really aggressive for aggressive fast mm -hmm. hot fish mm -hmm. or slow it down and tease up a bite when you're really really looking for one mm -hmm. I really thank you for spending some time with us, Doug. No problem. Um, Lots of fun. Thank I, you for uh, helping with the TV shoot that we're on. Well, so It's a real pr privilege. And um, and thank you for allowing me to play with some of my regulars, yeah. my, my local favorites like the Flasher Jig. Um, I, I I really acknowledge that, uh, you know, it's it's tough to fit those into the shoots and stuff, but it was something I, uh, when I was confident to be able to use. Yeah. And that helps when you have a cold weather like we had, have the confidence to use yeah, it. Yeah, well, just like me with the jigging rapala, it's you with that lure, so... Um, yeah, so there you yeah. Go. we discussed that before the shoot with mm -hmm. what we're going to use. Um, well, Doug, uh, I, I can speak for me and Jason and, and everybody involved with Maddie's Get Fishing that uh, you know you've been a, a childhood idol of mine hmm. and I know you spent enough time with me mm -hmm. that at age 45 <laughs> not, not much has changed no that's so. true no you're not <laughs> so, but, uh, still hardcore <laughs> yeah. so uh, I, I wish you uh, years and years and years of doing projects together still and, well I uh, hope so and, we'll see uh, what happens and yeah uh, success I know you're going to have and whatever you keep doing here for the next 20-25 years or so Wow. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Doug. You bet. All right. Great fishing with you. All right.